guy. You still don't believe in chemtrails or geoengineering? I mean, what else do you need? You need to see the blue dress too? Good grief, people. Look at that. Just a filthy haze of aluminum, barium, strontium, aerosol spraying. We're all just guinea pigs. It's going into our lungs. We're breathing it in. There's nothing we can do about it. I don't know if you can see that little bitty plane up there. And the little, that's actually a contrail behind it. it disappears just to, but, you know, a short distance behind it. And then, of course, you got the chemtrails. And you can see the plane actually spitting that out down there. And it's not going away. See the difference? Still don't believe it, still want to see proof, go to geoengineeringwatch.org and you can check out Dane Wigington, it's D-A-N-E-W-I-G-I-N-G-T-O-N. Check out his YouTube channel, just put up a video that had an ex-CIA agent, top, top secret security clearance, do a, a workshop where he talked about it and he also referenced the current CIA director talking about it right on the CIA website. I don't know what else you all need. Again, guys, Contrail, way down there, Chemtrail, you see it? There's jets spraying right now, right in front of your face. Get with it.
me. Woo.
Okay, well, I'm at the 11 and a half hour mark, give or take. And I'm kind of getting to that exhausted phase. Can't wait to get to my sister's house, shower up, put on my flannel PJs, get some Joe's pizza. Good stuff, man. I like doing the trifecta when I'm back home. I go to Joe's, Franco's, and Tony's. Gain about eight pounds in two days. Forget about it. When my brother's coming over. We're going to hang out, laugh a little bit. Hopefully hit the hay and get some sleep tomorrow. I get to go see Mama, Mama Sita. Now I know a lot of you guys. When you hear the words New York, you think uh, New York City. You think skyscrapers, cement city. But this is the New York I'm from. It's a huge state. New York is what I think nine miles. Just a small little island down there, Manhattan. And one of the things that upstaters hate about New York State is that it's ruled by the nine million people on that small little island where you got hundreds of thousands of acres upstate and millions of people upstate that just don't have the votes and the political clout to get anything done. So it's really like two separate countries. And unfortunately, hey, you got some sheep there, goats or something, yaks. I don't know what those were, some cows too. But you got, you know, a bunch of people that would align themselves more on the uh, conservative side upstate, and then a bunch of the liberal-minded people downstate ruling the roost. And there's a lot of people that would like to break the city off and make it its own state, so the people upstate can more align themselves politically and ide ideologically the way they see fit. See those windmills out yonder? I think that's Madison County. I think. They put those up maybe, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago. Let's see if I can get a better view over here. And I don't know how many they have up over there, but I think it's over 100. And it generates quite a bit of power. And those things are huge. Hopefully we can see them now. Yeah, there they are. That's just a small number of the ones that are out there, out in the countryside. You know, we have a lot of power in upstate New York that's generated, I think, at Niagara Falls. And, of course, we have power generated right there from those windmills, wind turbines. And it's brought via electrical cabling wiring down to New York City. They suck it all up. Another reason to not like New York City. like I'm descending Everest. Okay, we're coming down into the valley. It's 448, 63 degrees. Good trip. I only got about 10 minutes left in it, I think. And that puts me at just over 12 hours door to door. Woo! Five o'clock on the nose. I made it. Long drive, I'm exhausted. Thanks for coming along for the ride. I'm down here, I don't know what they call it, but this is the Barge Canal. You 
guys might have heard of it. It's called the Erie Canal, and it was merged with the barge at some point. And this is this is back where they used to do uh, that song, 15 Miles on the Erie Canal. So talk about a donkey pulling a boat, I guess. This is one of the major waterways that kind of helped the economic prosperity of upstate New York back a couple of hundred years ago. Back before there were roads and cars, and you, can, you can hear the, the traffic up there. Back before there was any of that, they used to take freight and goods by boat up along this man-made canal here. It was the Erie Canal, and then like I said, years later they dug it out and called it the Barge Canal, and they had barges. And, uh, show you that there. And they used to drag it by horses or donkey and drag the boats up and down from Albany to Buffalo. And then I think, I don't know, did they take the Hudson down from Albany to New York City? Anyway, it connected New York City with the Great Lakes. And so, oh, look at that. I do believe that was a red-tailed hawk. Anyway, years ago they built this trail. I think it's pretty cool. People bike along here and they walk along here and pretty neat. So last year, the year before, whenever I came home last and visited, my sister and I took like a four mile, five mile walk along here and it was just beautiful. So I decided to do it again today and I'm solo. I got to visit with my mom. Not so good. Just trying to make her comfortable at this point, you know. And uh, I got a phone call from my son today. He was pretty busted up in tears. Apparently one of the neighbor's dogs jumped over their fence enclosure, ran over and got a hold of the smaller chicken, Goldie, and killed her. And uh, that's a bummer, but I had to remind him and I, I was apologetic and told him I'm sorry, but I said, look, calm down. It's not the end of the world. This stuff happens. We have to expect it. But frankly, I'm surprised that they both made it this long. You know, they're free ranging and there's predators out there. Now, I wasn't necessarily expecting a neighbor's dog to come out and kill one of them. But it happens. And I said, calm down. The neighbor was very apologetic, came running over to get her dog, and she's gonna buy us a new chicken. And you know, it wasn't it wasn't an egg-laying chicken yet. She was still, she still hasn't laid an egg yet. So if one of them had to go, I guess I'm glad it wasn't Lucy, it was Goldie, but still, tough thing. And we gotta get another one because chickens don't like to be alone. So anyway, I thought I'd just take you along on this walk. that pretty soon I'll get far enough away to where you can't hear the traffic and it'll actually be like being in nature just love this time of year the fall foliage the colors are so beautiful up here it's one of the things I miss about being down south is yeah we experience fall down there and it's pretty but it ain't this pretty where I live and the leaves really are probably a week in the turn in here right now so in probably another week's time maybe two will be full peak here i know up in the mountains the adirondack mountains are already uh, probably peak or close to peak but the smell is just unreal i love the smell of the leaves in the fall
This is lock 20 at the Barge Canal. Now, I'm probably going to get all this wrong, but because the barge, I guess, is, I guess it slopes uphill from Albany down there, the buffalo up there, so what they have to do is step you up. So they bring the ship, they open up these big doors here, and the boat, or the ship, I've actually done this before in my boat, I had a little 18 footer, and it seemed like overkill, no doubt, but they'll bring you in here, and they'll close the doors behind you, and then they'll pump this full of water and bring you up, I don't know, I mean, you see, you see the line there, what's that about? 12, 15 feet, whatever it is, and they'll pump you up, and then they'll open those doors, and you sail out onto the next level. They close the doors behind you. But I think each time they do this, it's like some ungodly amount of water, a million gallons of water, something crazy. But here's one of the parks here, pretty nice. And people come here, we did a Harley Davidson thing here a couple years, I don't know, I say a couple years ago, more than a decade ago, because I moved away 11 years ago. Gosh, time's flying, guys. There's a pavilion down there that I rode into and hung out at. It's pretty here. I hope you all can see that. Empire States Navy. It takes a variety of different types of boats with design modifications for specific tasks to keep the Erie Canal functioning and safe. Buoy boats, tugs, and tug tenders, dredges, derricks, quarter boats and scows, totaling as much as 60 in 19... From what some have called the Empire States Navy, painted in the state's colors, blue with yellow trim, the boats are easily recognizable. That's one of the little barges there, I guess. Seems well, I just left my mom's house, and uh, it's, it's tough to say goodbye to your mom. Well, I know a lot of you guys have gone through that and lost people close to you. But it's tough to say goodbye to your mom for the last time, knowing that it's the last time you're going to see her alive. But it's probably selfish of me to want her to stick around because it's tougher to see her in pain and see her suffering. That's infinitely more difficult. Anyway, I spent a lot of my time the last year or so as I'm driving around. Sometimes when I'm sitting at a long red light, I find myself drifting off into uh, thinking about her funeral and giving a eulogy. That's probably not healthy, is it? Well, that's where my thoughts go sometimes, thinking about what I'm gonna say about my mom after she's gone. Anyway, I didn't mean to bring anyone down, just keeping it real. Now this is the central New York I'm used to. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew this or not. Everybody thinks Seattle is the precipitation capital of the country. But believe it or not, I looked this up once uh, before I moved down south. Actually, where I grew up gets something like, I don't know, 20 or 30 more days of precipitation per year than Seattle. So move over, Seattle. You don't own the rights of being the dreary, miserable capital of the country. We got the armpit status. You know, one of the things that I despised about this place before I moved away was the fact that there's nothing really ever going on here. Nothing overly exciting. There's no professional sports teams. There's no real economic development that you can point to in any way, shape, or form. Um, as a matter of fact, before I moved out, I looked at the county that I grew up in, the median household income. Household income, mind you. It was like $25,000 and change. That's... That's pretty poor. And it's something like double that where I moved to. So people have a little more money where I'm living now than here. It's kind of a struggle growing up here. And you're constantly you're constantly in a recession. This is never this this place has never come out of a recession. It's been in a recession since probably the 70s. Back in the 40s, this was a bustling town. And it had over 100,000 people here. And when I left in 2005, it was down to about 60,000. And it would have been about 40,000 if it weren't for the fact that they accepted Bosnian refugees back in the 90s and paid them money to come in. 
about 10,000 of them. And then I think in the 2000s, they brought in Somali refugees, about another 10,000. So they, they hovered around 60,000, but they have a lot of, it's, it's an older demographic. A lot of these people are on public assistance up here. And a lot of the people, you know, 20,000 out of the 60,000 that are here, they actually paid to move in. So it's a strange place, central New York. And it felt good to get out of it, but I, I digress. One of the things that I hated about this place was the fact nothing was going on, there was never any traffic. And it's just because it was kind of a dying or a dead place. But driving through here now, it's one of the things that I appreciate, the fact that there's no traffic. I'm like, look. You can get anywhere in this city, from one end to the other, in like 10 minutes. Regardless of the time of day. Maybe 15 if there's an accident. And where I live now, to get anywhere, you're talking a half an hour to an hour. And that gets old. So it's, uh, it's, it's just ironic that one of the things that I despised about this place before I moved is one of the things I've grown to appreciate when I come back to visit. Okay, in addition to the wonderful, awesome food and the pizza that I get up here when I come home that I really look forward to, I like the old uh, ice cream. So there's a place called Burn Dairy up here, and we've been going there and getting our milk and ice cream since we were little kids. And I stopped by and picked me up a black raspberry on a sugar cone with chocolate sprinkles. Reminds me of a kid, you know, being a kid again. So I'm gonna go and hit another pizza. I usually get the trifecta when I'm up here. I like Joe's, I like Franco's, I like Tony's. But I got Joe's the first night, I had Franco's yesterday, and I think I'm gonna do Franco's again today because it's just friggin' awesome. And there's something else up here called tomato pie, and I might pick up a tray of that. I always say I'm gonna bring it home with me, but it never makes it through the whole trip. It's probably not what you think of when you think of tomato pie. Maybe I'll show you a recipe. I'll show you a picture of it, maybe a recipe. That'd be good stuff. Well, Friday morning, back on the road again. I think it's October 12th, 13th. I don't even know. But I'm heading back home, and I got a 12 hour and change drive in front of me, and I'm picking up a chicken, red six link chicken on the way home to replace the chicken that. You know. Can you see? No, I can't either. This is nerve wracking. I hate driving in the fog. It's pretty thick stuff. I can't see, but my yard's in front of me. Got some dude behind me pushing. Me luck. I just don't know if the camera does this justice. Probably not. Those mountains out in the distance are just beautiful. Well, gang, it's just after 3 o'clock on Friday. And I got about a hundred miles left to Charlotte and then a little ways past that. I'll tell you what, it's this last stretch that gets me. It's 
starting to really feel fatigued now. And I got a new friend in the back. I don't know if you can see the box, but I'll introduce you to her in a little bit.